All righty, let's get rolling. Um, my name is Kyle Houchins. I'm a techno trainer for McNeil, and this is Getting Started Rhino for Mac. And um, this product we're going to work on today is a little doodle I threw together. I was paging through a uh, design journal on Instagram, which is a fun page to look through, and some of the designer sites there that have piles of sketches and stuff. And I stumbled across this um, Raymond Lowy designed pencil sharpener. And I was looking at it, and it it was a cool form, but I felt like, wow, that would be something kind of cool to update. So I did a redesign of it, and I made mine look a little faster. So we'll refer to this as the faster version, and then we can refer to his as the Raymond Slowy version, because I think his looks a little slower than mine. But um, uh, And just wanted to talk a little bit about how to put something together. And this is a simple looking product, but it's a little deceptive in how um, we're going to put it together. Um, depending on how we were to say, for instance, look at these elements right here, right? If these had a section like this, and it's drawing with my mouse, so it's a little rough, but if they if they had a big fat section that kind of tapered out like this, would be a little bit easier to model than if they had a very thin section like this. And of course, this is a horrible drawing, so I'm drawing with my mouse. But um, and the reason for that is the transitions between right here, right here, and right here. And we could fudge those, right? We could lie, cheat, or steal. Um, and we could just make this a hard transition, make that a hard transition, make that hard, and make that hard, and just leave it, you know, as a, as a, you know, as a sharp, non-filleted, non-blended transition. Or we could dive in with the wolves and try to figure out how to make this all blend smoothly, which would mean we would have to dig into this surface a little bit, dig into this surface, and then figure out how to blend all of this stuff together smoothly. Now, in NURBS, this is a a daunting task in order to get because this is a this is a perfectly round surface right and so in order to get a smooth blend into a perfectly round surface it can be a challenge so we have to ask ourselves self how much of a challenge do we really want to dig into and and decide you know do we want to really push this high end and worry about crazy curvature continuity or do we want to hack it together and do just, you know, a teeny tiny little fillet around this thing? Um, or do we investigate something possibly like sub D and get these transitions for free. And I think the answer lies kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, this, this product could actually all be done in sub D, but there's some kind of crispness to this that um, might be a little bit of a challenge to get in sub D. So I think what I'm going to do, and just if you haven't watched my webinars before, this is, this is, the way these roll. I, I do these sketches either the day before or the morning of, <clears throat> most often the morning of, and uh, this one I actually did yesterday, but um, the demo I did yesterday, I did the sketch about 15 minutes before I went live. And I don't rehearse them. I don't practice them. I basically do the sketch and then put it away. And then the next time I open it is when I go live. And the reason that I do that is because I want to put myself in the same position that I put you in or that anybody puts you in when you're working in a studio where somebody walks into your office and drops a sketch on your desk and says, build this, right? Or you do your own sketch and you say, build this. And if you haven't built something before, then you have to figure it out along the way, right? So I'm trying to build you know, a library of content 
where I'm in the same boat that you are, where I have to figure this stuff out live. If we make mistakes, we're going to talk about it. Um, I always like to say I like to look dumb so that you don't have to. Um, and we'll try and figure out how to make all this stuff work. And sometimes even deceptively simple products like this that should be a revolve, a revolve, a couple of by rails, a couple of by rails, and some kind of smushy thing down here that we stick together. This should be a piece of cake, right? Usually something's like this, somebody drops this on my desk and I go, oh, okay, you know, I'm, it's two hours of modeling, but I'm going to charge you a full day just because that's the way my billing works. Um, and I don't want to get out of bed for less than a full day's worth of work. And, and, you know, and I'm like, this is going to be an easy day. And then sometimes you jump into these things and they just won't stop punching you in the face. So I think I've been doing this long enough that when I look at something simple like this, I think, okay, this might be an easy get, um, or it might be a, a complete and utter dumpster fire, and we're going to have to fight for every single transition on this thing. Either way, hopefully you'll learn something along the way. If I throw myself into the fan, I'm going to back up and talk about how that happened and figure out how we can get there. Um, if it goes off easier than I'm thinking it might, then we'll talk a little bit about rendering. Um, I'm running a new M1 Mac Monterey. Um, and it's pretty snazzy. Um, we don't have the GPU enabled just yet for rendering, so it's still not super, super speedy, but it's definitely been faster than my old 2015 MacBook Pro that I used to do demos on. Thanks, Bob, for buying new computers. Um, all right, so let's let's jump into this and see. Are there any questions before we get started? Because I these are interactive. I want you to find the chat and ask questions. And um, if I do something stupid, you know, by all means, call me out on it and we'll talk about it. And, and you know, the goal here is not for me to do a demo and look like a genius and show Rhino in all of its glory. The goal here is for us to learn about getting over clean sheet syndrome where you're looking at a blank Rhino model screen and try to figure out how in the world am I going to make this thing. So we're going to talk a lot about process and concept and ways to do things. And if we try something and it sucks, we're going to back up and, and try it a different way and talk about why the first way sucked and talk to why, about why the second or third or fourth or fifth way worked. And, and we'll go from there. And if it works out great, this will be a short demo. If it works out awful, then buckle up and pour some coffee. We're in for a slog. So um, with that, the well, let's go ahead and get started. And the the way that I start every you know demo and and 99% of most of my models is uh, by importing a picture. And we do that with the picture command. We just run the command. It brings up a browser. You find the image and you place it in the screen. And it's just an object, you can move it around, you can scale it, you can rotate it, you can copy it, you can do all sorts of stuff that you want. In this case, what I'm gonna do is throw it on a layer. And so I'm gonna copy object to layer. I'm gonna change the name of this layer to image so that I know what it is. And then I'm going to pick the object, I'm gonna go to, ooh, looks like I've got two surfaces in here. Hello, grab one of them. Oh, made a copy. <clears throat> All right. So this one is, let's see, is it on the right layer? See, this is why we do these things. Make sure that you've got it on the right layer. Pick the object, and then we're going to go to the materials, and you'll see that there's a material already created by the picture command that's assigned to this object, which is just a single surface. We're going to roll down here a little bit, and then I'm going to just crank the object transparency up so that the image fades. Um, first of all, so you can't see how scruffy my line work is, and second of all, so that we can model over it with that and, and be able to see what we're doing. The next thing I always do is I just drag this out of the model window, um, basically out of the space that I'm going to be building the model. And the reason I do that is because if I throw a model in the center of this thing and my image lands in the center and I go to shaded mode, it cuts the model in half and it I can't see the drawing. So I always just grab this thing and I just use gumball and I drag it back in space. And that way I can see what's going on in perspective view. And if I go to front view, 
wireframe, I, you know, it's still lined up correctly and I can do what I need to do without it getting in the way of the model. So once I do that, and I'm going to just stick this mildly at the origin. And once I do that, we just lock that layer and then we forget about it. We can't select it. We can't adjust it. We can't do anything to it. And we can start laying out the basic pieces. Now, the most obvious piece here is clearly going to be a revolved object. And we can either revolve it in sub D or we can revolve it in NURBS. I think I'm going to start in NURBS. And if it fights me and makes me look really stupid, then I'm going to, I'll switch over to uh, sub D and we'll go from there. Um, for stuff like this, I'm just going to draw a simple straight line. And then I'm going to change degree from one to three. And the reason I do that is because it gives me four perfectly spaced points. I don't even have to, th I don't even have to think about it. I'm going to turn the points on for this curve and select them. And then I'm going to just use gumball to drag this. And it gives you this beautiful curve that's super easy to control. And we can play with it now, right? This is our first design decision because the goal here, we want to be designers. We don't want to be CAD monkeys. We don't want to be copiers. We don't want to be tracers. We want to be designers. We want to be artists. We want to be sculptors. We want to use the tool to make better art as opposed to using the tool to copy other crap that people have done, right? Um, if you're a good designer, Rhino is going to make you a better designer. If you are a bad designer, it's going to make you able to make bad designs very quickly. So the goal here is to be able to start evaluating this and say, okay, well, we can see the limitations of my sketchy Charles Schultz shaky hands here um, and, and see how the, my, my curve dips and rises and dips and stuff like that. And we need to decide like, okay, was that the intent or was, was that just in my case, you know, bad drawing skills with too much coffee? And in this case, I think I'm going to go with option number two, that it was just a, a crap drawing and we're going to use Rhino to make it better. So I'm going to use Rhino to, to, to adjust this and I can pull these around a little bit and say, okay, well, maybe that, maybe that speeds up just a little bit. Maybe this tapers out just a little bit more and we're going to call that good. And the last thing that I want to do is decide like what is happening with this transition. Is this a round transition down here or is it a pointy one? And in this case, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it be pointy and then I'm going to adjust the the output in order to get smooth and we'll talk about how to do that so let's just go ahead and revolve that i'm going to just guesstimate where the center line of this thing is so we're going to pick this and just revolve the other thing i didn't mention is we have some decisions to make as far as this curve right there's some detailing going on here there's there's a step there's a secondary piece down here and there's a cut line if we decide there's a cut line back here too if we decide to put those cut lines in now this is the time to do it and the and let's just let's just go ahead and do it while we're while we're thinking about it so i'm going to just drag this out i'm going to pick i'm going to start dragging by the seaplane waffle here i'm going to tap option to make a copy of it and i'm going to just place it there i'm going to overbuild it i'm going to let it be that way and then i need to decide like is this cut line flat on the bottom or does it follow the contour, I think I'm going to go with contour. And then we grab all this stuff, trim, just clean all this stuff up. And we end up with our little cut there. We're going to do the same thing back here. I'm going to just cheat and use a square. And I'm just going to drag that through something like that. Trim. And that gets us that. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of the details here by just drawing these things, something like that. And that gives us the rest of the detailing that we need for this thing. And so I'm going to use this point down here as the location for my rotation. So let's join this stuff all into one curve, and then let's revolve it. And I'm using commands and typing, and I shouldn't do that. I should pick it out of the menu bar so you can see where it is. Revolve lives down here. And I'm going to pick the start point as the end of this curve, drag it straight out this way, and it's going to be a full circle. 
and it is going to be NURBS and not sub D. And so what that does is that gives us our first shape, right? We're sailing, we're sailors. And now is the first time that we get to evaluate this and say, okay, we've taken this 2D sketch that may be of questionable quality and we've turned it into 3D and we can evaluate it and say, how does this feel? Is it, is it need to be fatter? Does it need to be skinnier? What's the aspect? Does it need to be, is it need to be bigger, smaller? You know, what, what is happening here and how do we feel about these pieces? And in this case, I think I'm just going to let it ride and we're going to, we're going to continue. Now, we talked about this point down here. Let's extract this, and I'm going to do that by just right-clicking on the explode icon, and I'm going to pull this guy out without copy, and I'm going to let it just be a surface unto itself for now. I'm going to turn the points on, and you'll con you can see that we've got a fairly, you know, decent point structure here. It's also open at the at the end. So what I'm going to do is collapse this down to a singularity, and I'm going to shift click on a scale icon, scale to zero. Let's see. Scale this to zero. Hello. There we go. And then I'm going to scale this one to zero. For some reason, I got to get rid of the input first before I add the zero. And that collapses it down to a point, right? We scaled everything down to zero. Now what we can do is we can grab this row, and we're just going to pull it straight out, and we're going to snap it right to the end. And you can see what happens is that just rounded the end. Well, why did that end round? Because what we did is we made this row collapse to a singularity, and then we snapped the next row to be tangent to this row. And tangency means that the G0 point, which in this case is this, and the G1, or the tangent point, this one, are in a straight line. And it's in a straight line in this direction, and in that direction, and in that direction, and in that direction, which means we get tangency in 360 degrees, right? Or, okay, does that make sense? So, question? No? Okay. Um, so let's go back to wireframe, and then let's fix this a little bit just by scaling it. And I'm gonna scale this down in three dimensions by holding the shift key and we can drop it right back on the drawing like it was before. Okay, And it's a little off of our curve because it's changed just a little bit, so we can decide whether that's okay. Um, it's changed also a little bit because we added that tangency, so and we didn't have it before, so it, I would expect it to fall off that curve a little bit. And again, once we're in three dimensions, we start evaluating that and say, okay, is that what we wanted? Is Did we want that much point at the end or did we want less point? Um, if we wanted less point, we're going to need to add a row of points in here and we would do that from control points, insert knot. We would insert a knot down here and we would get another row of control points and that would give us the ability to be able to then pull this and decide how round or how sharp or whether it OGs in or whether it goes out like that, okay? I think I'm gonna let it roll the way it was before because I think I'm okay with that, but that is how you would make that adjustment if you wanted to do this. I, I've been trying to focus more in these getting started on, on making sure that everyone knows, understands, and gives themselves permission to start messing with the surfaces. Just because the tool made this surface doesn't mean that surface is, um, is sacred. Um, you should 100% turn on the points and start dragging them around if the surface didn't give you what you wanted. And when you understand how all these, these points and stuff kind of work together and how, the con you know, how to read the control cage around this thing to, to determine things like tangency, 
it opens up a whole new world as far as being able to control Rhino and make it do what you want as opposed to accepting what it gives you. And that's the whole goal of this, right? We want to get you to the point where you are you are in control and Rhino is the is the obedient genie that just does what you want, right? That's that's where we want to get everybody to. So I'm going to hit escape, get rid of the points, and I'm going to join this all back up. And it should join up nicely because we didn't mess with this row of points in here. We didn't touch anything in this area. So it should join back up and it should go to a closed poly surface, which it did. And the reason it's closed is because we just let this cap, shift control click to sub select, sub object select an object, we let this cap just cap itself. Um, Obviously, this is a pencil sharpener and it needs to have an input, right? So I'm going to explode this surface or extract it. I'm going to shift drag and scale it. And then I'm going to go back and use a planar surface to connect this and this again. And the reason that I did that is because this gives me the opportunity to now sub object model. Shift command click. If I grab the extrude dot on this, because this is now a surface unto itself, I can just pull this in and boop, now I've got my hole. And it gets better because I can shift, shift control, shift command, sorry, shift command in the Mac, uh, click this. I did a, a PC demo yesterday, so I'm still in PC mode. Um, you can sh shift command click the edge, and now we can determine, does this have a little lead in? or does it have a little point? And in this case, I kind of like having just a tiny bit of a lead in, right? That seems to make sense. And then maybe we'll refine this later and maybe we'll actually knock this off and, and roll it so that it's smooth when it goes in there. Maybe that kind of fits with the whole theme of this thing. But in the end of the day, as it sits right now, we've basically got this, this part done. Right. And and if we were doing this as a real object, we'd shell it and put the mechanics and all that stuff in it. But we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to just say this is a concept model and we're looking for something that we can print and throw on a desk and see what it looks like. So actually what we're doing is a demo. We're not going to do any of that anyways, but you get the point. So let's do the same thing up here. And and I think I'm going to go ahead and put my cut lines in while I'm while I'm drawing my curve. So again, I'm going to start with a straight line. I'm going to start right on the point. I'm going to go to the corner. I'm going to change degree and I'm going to make this degree three and I'm going to turn on the points and then I'm going to pick the points and then I'm going to pull them with the seaplane waffle and see how easy that is. That takes all of the pain out of drawing a curve. You know, this thing is beautiful. If I show the curvature comb on this, um, it is going to look fantastic and show curvature. Where are you? Curvature ref on, duh, got to look lower. Um, let's make this black so that you can see it. And let's crank up the scale on this. Look how beautiful that curvature comb is. There is no dip, no dent, no anything in here, right? It's all, it is all good in the hood, which is what we want. So let's shut that off. And then we're going to add our cut line. Maybe I'll I missed my point just a hair, so I'm going to move that. Uh, let's add our cut line. I'm going to do that with a, with a very small square. Trim, Command T is the hotkey for that join and I'm going to let this end and then we're going to just cap it um, when after we roll the after we roll the revolve and the reason for that is I think I feel like this needs a little a little fillet on the end now I could draw that in and just have it done from the beginning right there's no reason I couldn't do that if I snap this kind of to here and I figure out where the end is and then I draw a line from here to here, and then I get rid of this line, and then I fill it. It that works, right? We can certainly do that. That fillet's huge. Let's redo that. I have no idea what the scale on this thing is. I'm just 
kind of made it up when I got started. I would typically, if I was going to build this for somebody, I would, I, I would check the scale. <laughs> it's probably not a bad idea, but this thing could be 30 feet tall. I don't know. Um, we could do it this way, right? There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I find it's easier to go revolve cap fill it. It just goes a little faster. And so this is the slow way. And if we were to undo it, I'll show you the fast way, which is just to grab this, revolve, start from here, full circle, cap. We know that that's capped because it was planar. And then we're going to throw a blend edge on this, which lives under here. And I thought we, I think we said point 0.1 was kind of what we were looking at. And point 0.15 probably. You're like, oh yeah, massive speed gains now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of where, you know, the other way to do this. So you just got to, you know, decide which one you like. I, I kind of prefer the surfacing method because typically I go back and I put my fillets in at the very end. Um, in this case, I'm just kind of speeding them along because I don't want to drag this forever. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to extract the surface without copy. Turn the points on. And then this is already pulled to a singularity. So this is our end. And in this case, I'm going to just grab this and I'm going to drag it forward, hold down option and snap it. Then I'm going to shift drag on the scale handle and determine how pointy that's going to be. And again, the reason this works is because we had a singularity at the end. We took the next row up and we snapped it. So these three points are all in a straight line. This is a super, super, super easy way to model things that are um, closed. Like say, for instance, if you had a, let's just back off for a second and do this. If we had a cylinder and we pulled it up like this and we explode it and we get rid of the ends and we wanted to make this degree three in both directions. and we turn the points on, we've got enough rows here where we could actually turn this into a capped, you know, rounded capped object. And the way we would do that is we'd shift drag all of these, we'd scale to zero, and then we'd scale to zero again, and we've got a point. And then we can either pull this row up or we can pull this point down. And in this case, I'm gonna just pull it down and then we've got a rounded object. Shift drag on this, and you can determine how round, you know, now it's a shift knob, now it's a ear cleaner, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but this is how you make it. <laughs> All right, and so we've got this set up the way we want. We're gonna join this all back together. It should come up as a closed poly surface. Keep an eye on your command line report down here. If you do something and you expect it to be a closed poly surface, and it's, it's po closed poly surface, easy for you to say, closed poly surface, and it's not, stop. Show the edges, right, which lives under here. Go to show edges and figure out where the naked edges are. Pick this thing. And in this case, it says no naked, no non-manifold, no non-manifold edges. If it had a naked edge, right, it would show up in pink, and you could figure out why it's naked and then fix it. So I like to work in into what I refer to as chunks, right? I'll build this chunk, I'll build that chunk, I'll build this chunk, I'll build this chunk, and I'll build this chunk down here, and I'll make sure each one of those individual elements is closed and watertight and good before I start trying to figure out how they fit together. And that keeps you going in the right direction as you're modeling and, and puts you in a position where when you get done and you say file save, you know it's good. You know the thing is done. You know it's watertight, you know it's good. All right, let's go to wireframe here and take a look at how we're gonna make these parts. 
And this is where we have to do a little deciding. We have to decide how, I'm gonna get rid of these curves. We have to decide how these things are gonna to work together. And I'm gonna just overbuild them for the time being. And I'm gonna start under the surface and I'm gonna start peeling out. And then I'm gonna go inside the surface like that. And this is probably a little too much. So I'm gonna just delete this point. And it may, that point, it might even be too much. Actually, it's not. I think I'm going to leave it. And then this point up here, that might be too much. You can always just pick and delete and then say, okay, that's that's a little bit more reasonable. And maybe this even needs to pull down like that. Because what we want to be able to do is connect these with an, an arced shape, you know, so that we can determine the crown of this thing. And if we get too crazy, if we pull way down here like this, then then the surface is not going to be able to wrap around that and find its way. So let's pull this guy something like that. And then I'm going to isolate just so I'm looking at just those parts and zoom in. And then I need to determine kind of what, you know, what's going on here. So I'm going to do this just with a straight line. And I'm going to just snap from here to here. And then I'm going to snap from here to here again with a straight line. Same thing, change degree. I actually have a script on my PC and I didn't bring it over here for making a straight line that has four points in it. Um, Pascal showed me how to do that. When I post the video, I'll... If I remember, and if I don't, somebody hit the comments when I post a video on YouTube, um, and I'll dig up the script and and do a little write up on how to how to add that because this is super useful having a straight line with four points. Turn the points on for those guys, and I'm just going to grab these. I don't have to worry about any construction planes or anything with the with the gumball. I can just grab these, and then I can say, okay, how much how much crown is this thing going to have? Is it going to have that much? Is it going to have that much and then taper? You know, what, what's going on here? And the cool thing is if we turn history on, which lives up here on the Mac, we can actually play with this and we can do it a couple of ways. We can do a surface from, uh, a surface from four points, which lives in here. We can just grab these guys and get that. And then we can see what it looks like. And because we have history enabled, we can now iterate with this just by pulling the points. Is that too much? Is that not enough? What do the highlights look like? Are they cool? Do we do we like the way those highlights? I'm a big fan of of little, you know, these little zingy little highlights on here, um, which are going to make ours look faster than poor old Raymond's. Um, I was I was uh, thinking about it and I was like, you know, there's a reason that Raymond Lowy worked for Avanti and not Ferrari. And then I actually did some research. And when the Avanti came out, it was the fastest production car in the world. <laughs> Shows who the idiot is. He's an industrial design legend and I'm a demo monkey. So what are you going to do? Um, so we've got this. Uh, we've got this set up and then let's just mirror it and see what it looks like. So I'm just going to mirror it and say, OK. And because the curves control the surface and the surface controls the mirror, check this out. Now I can iterate in, 2D, in, in three dimensions and I can say, OK, how, how do I feel about this? You know, and I'm making, I'm making my decisions in 3D. And I think what I want is I want a little bit of taper bottom to top. I don't want to get crazy like that. And maybe just a little bit more taper on the top. And again, the way that the history chain on this works, the curves control this surface, this surface mirrored over controls that surface. So we have to make sure that we're pulling only the curves if we want to control the whole object. If we move the original surface, it will update the mirror, right? But it broke the history to the curves, which we don't want. So I'm going to undo and leave that alone. So this gives us this type of kind of cool shape. And if we turn the points on for this, we can see what's going on here in the fact that we've got a row of points. We've got one, two, three, four points because our curve was all constructed out of four points, degree three. So this is essentially, you know, 
uh, a, a very simple, easy to model part. Now, if we wanted to make tangency across the center line, what we would have to do is we would have to either just run match surf, which we could do. In fact, let's just see what that does. And we could just match this surf to this one. And we could set it to tangency and see what it does. And we want to we want to average the surfaces. And it killed history, that's fine. And and it gives us really kind of a nice a nice shape. So I think I'm going to roll with that, and I think I may actually do that in the back as well. And the reason for that is not only does this give me a beautiful center line match, you can see that across the center line we don't have any you know butts or dips. You know we don't want to we don't want a mohawk and we don't want a butt chin across the center line. And if we look at the points, we can see exactly why that's happening. These are all lined up all the way across, all the way down the surface. If they weren't, right, if we if we grabbed these two points, for instance, and we pulled them backwards, look what happens. Now that they're not lined up again, we've broken that tangency. And on this ISO curve, it's going to blend from tangency here to sharp back to tangency, which is not what we want, what we want but it's cool knowledge to have because you can do that when you want. Again, right? We want to be the one that tells the genie what to do. We don't want to sit there and cower under the genie's great and mag magical powers. If we pull it forward, then we get a canoe, right? And we don't necessarily want that either. But again, cool to understand how this works so that if you did want that, you knew how to do it. All right. So that's how you determine, you know, what your tangencies and stuff look like. And and it's easy to repair, you know, and you can check it just by if you go like, say, for instance, we stick a midpoint here and we pull this out. You can see these are all lined up. So if one of these was out of shape, like, say, for instance, it was down here, all you'd need to do is just snap it back to there. And then you could decide how much tangency you want as long as it slides up and down this line. As long as these are lined up, it doesn't matter whether the tangency is out here or in here, you know, this is still tangent. That's still tangent. As long as they're in a straight line, then you're good to go. So when you look at this and you start understanding how these control cages, you know, appear, you can start to read them and say, okay, tangent, 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 everything's fine, everything looks good. And if you get to one and you go and you see this, you go, whoop, I gotta fix that. And you can fix it just by simply dragging a line in there and then snapping it and figuring out where you want. So this gives you the ability to be able to not only control the tangency, understand the tangency, and then decide, you know, selectively along the surface edge, do you want it to be tangent or not? And are there cool effects from, from blending in and out of tangency by how you manipulate the points? All right. So I think I've beaten that to death. So let's look at... <clears throat> the back end of this thing. And I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to use match. And what match does is it just literally lines the points up. Match surf. And I'm going to match this edge to this edge. And we're going to use average the surfaces. We're going to match them by the closest point. We're going to leave everything else alone. And we're going to say match. Now, what if it did what I wanted it to, what I asked it to do, but not what I wanted it to do? Well, that is a simple case of I'm going to double click this control polygon here, double click that one, select all of these edges, and then I'm just going to scale them together. Still tangent, but it's just a tighter version of that tangency. And I can edit the entire length of that surface all at one time and control this. Now, what if the center of this thing now doesn't have enough crown in it? Because I think I flattened it out a little bit. Let's change degree again. And the cool thing about change degree is if I can control in, in either direction, so it can be degree three in this direction, degree four in that direction. But the cool thing about change degree is as long as you're going up, the shape of the surface does not change. So if I change this from degree three to, this, let's say, degree five, and I change this to degree five, I like to have a match. You can They don't have to match, but you can. Check out what happens. Look at all these extra points I got but my surface didn't change at all. Now, if I change from degree five to degree three, I'm throwing away points, yeah, the surface is gonna change. 
But the cool thing about this, and actually let's undo that and let's change degree instead of three, let's go to four because I just want a few more points than I have. I just want this center row here. And if I double click on the control polygon on both sides, now because I've got access to this row, check it out, I can adjust the crown of this thing and say, how thick, how fat, how whatever do I want this to be? And even cooler, if I go to the right hand view and I were to say, rotate that set of points, and it, I can't do that symmetrically, so let's just do one side and then if we like it, we'll mirror it. So let's do this. Let's go to the right hand view and let's rotate. I'm going to start by snapping to the top point, drag straight down, check this out. Now I can decide what the taper of that thing looks like. You know, is it is it too flat and finny? And do I need to add a little bit more substantialness? It's not a word. Um, to the bottom of this. And if you look at the original Lowy design, the 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 pedestal that the thing sits on is massive. It's really fat and really, you know, really heavy, which is one of the things I reacted to when I saw it. And I was like, I can do better than that. Um, these are the things you say to yourself when you're a designer. Doesn't matter how good the design is, you always look at it and go, yeah, I can do better than that. <laughs> Nobody ever said designers were short on ego. So, all right. So let's pop this out just a little bit, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let that I'm gonna let that kind of settle in that direction, and then we can also decide whether or not the bias of this, like how the bias of this is working, like do we want it to be front fatter or back fatter, and kind of some somewhere in there kind of feels good to me, gives it a little bit more of an airfoil shape. But again, because we haven't messed with this row or this row in the back, everything's still tangent. It's all still good, and the highlights are going to track beautifully. So that's a that's a long a long conversation about a fairly simple part, but that gives us kind of what I needed to get out of this, which is this nice, beautiful kind of highlighty thing. The other thing, by setting the tangencies on the front and back, I've set myself up for a continuous fill it around this thing or a continuous blend. Whereas if I had left points, I would have this weird point situation that I'd have to deal with where I'd have to round this around the corner, but then I'd have a point here that I'd have to deal with. So then I would have had to maybe fill at this edge or fill at the back or something like that. But in this case, what I can do is I can just grab all these things and I can say Boolean union. And if my, if my, normals were facing in the right direction, which they're probably not. Maybe I didn't join these. Ah, that's why. Yeah, got to join this first. And then we can Boolean, because now it's a volume. There we go. So this all connects. And so what I can do is I can try the easy route, which is blend edges. And I'm going to just grab here and here. And let's preview it, see what it looks like. And in that case, that's actually not too bad. I may want a bigger blend on the front of this thing. So let's add a handle and let's add it right smack dab in the middle here. And let's make it a little bigger like that. And that way it gets a little nicer transition out of here and I kind of like that little that little V that it's making back there that how that highlight kind of zings down there and because it's previewed don't get too crazy about you know don't worry too much about it because it's this is going to clean up this is the render mesh is, is rough um, and then we can experiment with you know what the what the different versions of this distance for edge rolling ball or distance between rails and see which version we like best and I kind of like the distance between rails. And what that does is that's just going to measure this distance between these two um, and, and let that roll. And let's see if we can maybe even add just a little bit back here and see if we can get a little bit more play out of this. Again, this is all like 
you know, these are all iterations and we can look at our drawing and see how close we're matching. And I think I feel pretty good about that. So I think I'm going to actually let that roll. And if we emap this, we can kind of see what this thing looks like. <clears throat> Hopefully it's not going to die on me. There we go. And you can see that we've got a really kind of beautiful chromatastical blend going on there. So I am I am super happy about that. So we're going to let that roll. I am going to you'll notice that I'm now 45 minutes into this demo and I haven't saved. Um, that's bad me. Um, it does speak well of, uh, of the fact that, you know, the stability on the Mac has come a long way. <laughs> so, um, I don't, I don't sweat it as much as I used to. Let's throw another blend on here and blend and let's get this one. Now notice what's happened here, just because of the way these two shapes have interacted. See that shape right there? We'll have to keep an eye on that and see what it looks like. And in this case, we may blend out a little farther. And back here, we might need to add a handle. I don't know, actually, that looks okay. I'm gonna be okay with that. That gives us our shape back there. All right, so let's do the exact same thing we did up here. And now that we kind of understand the process of what we're doing, we're going to go a little faster. I'm leaving space. You'll see when I draw my curves, I'm leaving space for where the fillet is going to be because what I don't want to do is pull this curve way out there and then make the surface invert when we when we make it. And we'll play with our speed, how this thing is going to accelerate and decelerate in and out of here. And then we'll make our our surface from 4. And I always have to look for it on the Mac. Surface. Come on now. Where do you live? That's the corner points. There we go. Duh, right there. And we have a little bit more complex point structure on this because I didn't I didn't make this out of, you know, it's not four, 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 four with a point count, but it's still okay because if I turn the points on, you'll see that it's still fairly well organized. So let's just take a peek at it and see what it looks like in shaded view. I actually am kind of okay with that. That's actually kind of a cool little, little unintended highlight back there that I kind of dig. So let's mirror this. And then let's just match surf and see what we get. We could have 100% built our original curves so that they had this tangency built in, but this is easy enough. I just I just let it roll and then deal with it later. And it's looking a little chonky, so let's turn our points on and let's double click the control and then we're going to just scale this in just to get it a little skinnier and definitely in the back is way too fat so let's drop that and then i've already got my my rows in the center here so or do i let's see do i no i don't that's fine looks like it did just give me four points so if I want to get a little bit more thickness in this thing, I can just I can just grab the entire thing. I can just grab the surfaces now and I can scale them. 
right? Just get it a little fatter. And I think I want a little bit more weight down here just to give that a little bit more substantialness. And then if we want to get fussy, we can isolate this and we can start like doing things like this where we scale just the top and we can actually add a little bit of a taper to it and grab these guys and just let that blend in and out a little bit. I love this new feature in 7 where you can double click the control cage and get a whole row of points. And we can, you know, because we can control this and we're only going in essentially the y direction when we're scaling this, you know, we can even we can do things like this. We could add you know, a feature or we could add a taper or whatever, you know, it's like the ability to be able to now start sculpting and saying, okay, Rhino, I see what you did there, but I'm going to, I'm going to take it from here and I'm going to make this shape taper exactly like I want instead of what you gave me. And that is a fabulous feeling because you can start really controlling what happens here. And this is where it starts to get really, really fun because you're no longer being held hostage by, you know, what the tools give you. And that for me is where kind of the magic for all this stuff starts to happen. And you'll get used to looking at this. You'll get, you'll be able to start reading the control cage and say, well, maybe I need Maybe I want this to OG a little bit at the bottom and I want it to, you know, do something like that. Well, you'll be able to do that because you'll know which points control it. In this case, I think I want a fairly linear thing. So, and that gives us a really beautiful, look at the highlights on that. We take that father of modern industrial design. I'm actually a big Raymond White fan. I don't want to sound like I'm too long. <laughs> I'm get so much hate now. All right, let's take a look at this. I'm going to join this up. And I said that I worked in chunks. A nice way to do that is just to run the cap command and then just cap this. Now this is a solid closed object and I know that it's I know that it's closed up. Now, this is really tight at the back here. This is a this is a very sharp corner for this to go around. So I may or may not have troubles making this blend happen. But I also have to look at it and say, okay, how is this, how does this fit into my design? And in this case, it's not, it's not bad, right? It's following, maybe it should come out here a little farther and blend out in the back, but let's see, let's see what happens. I think we can get away with just simply running some blends again. Let's see what happens. If not, we will go to the next phase, which is actually building a gap and modeling it from there. So I'm going to make this a lot bigger and see what happens. Whee. Oh, sweet. Did it. Let's add a handle. I'm going to put this guy right in the front here like that. The other thing that we want to be cognizant of when we do revolve, see how it turns red? It's saying, eh, don't get crazy. That's that's where it's like, eh, it's going to fail. If I pull this way out here, eh, actually it, it did it, but usually when it turns red like that, it's whining and saying that something's going to fail. How big can we get back here? Well, isn't that fabulous? What's that look like? Now we broke it. <laughs> I want to pull it back into the white range here. And now I post the entire thing. We might have to we might have to rerun it. All right, so I'm going to escape and I'm going to rerun it. See, I got greedy. Flew too, close, flew too close to the sun and angered the blending gods. 
All right, let's try this again. So this one, I'm going to pull it out to about there. And it went too far again. And then let's go to the front, and I'm going to add a handle. The main thing that I want to get across is I want, you know, I, I, I run across people all the time who call me, they call me on tech support and stuff, and they're like, oh, I'm so stressed out about this. It's like, I don't want you to be stressed out about this. I want you to play. This is fun. We get to make art for a living, people. This is this is awesome stuff, you know? I don't want you to sweat this. I want you to, like, look at this and understand how to control this stuff well enough so that it's fun, you know? Let's e-map this and see what it looks like. Ooh. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I think that looks great. Whoosh! Meow! It's fun, right? Play. Have fun. This is what you do for a living. If you don't like what you're doing, you can go sell insurance instead. You make more money, but you won't have as much fun. <clears throat> All right. The bottom of this thing. Let's let's think about how to do this. And what did we learn about, about manipulating points and things like that? What if we made our lives simple and we just started with the cylinder and i'm going to set the direction to none so that i can place it in this view and what if it was about that wide and about i don't know maybe that tall and what if we changed its degree to like oh i don't know Let's do like four, just so that we've got enough points to play with. And, <clears throat> and we turn the points on. And for some reason, the change degree didn't take. So let's do it again. Four. Why are, you, why are you misbehaving on me like that? Oh, because it's capped. Duh. Can't change the <laughs> can't change the degree of a poly surface. Let's command shift click delete. Command shift click delete. Now let's change degree. Well, gee, if you do it right, look at that. Now, what do we know about making roundy things? If we grab these points. And we scale to zero, and then we scale to zero, we made a roundy thing. And we also know that if we start scaling points together, we can change the shape on things. So what if we grabbed these points and these points, and we started like this? And I don't like how this broke apart. So let's do a different thing. And the reason that this the reason that this is doing this is because of where the seam is. So let's let's do this instead. Let's make a shape that starts kind of like this. And then let's revolve it. We'll just do this a different way. I think when I did my original revolve, I didn't make this deformable. So let's make this deformable, make this four and four. I think that would have worked before. There we go. Now when we turn the points on, we should be able to mess around with this and not and not break it. And this is the seam right here. There's a command called surf seam. If you wanted to move it, I can move the seam to wherever I want. And, and in this case, I'm going to leave it right where it is because this is going to be the pointiest part of the model. And what do you see is going on? Let's isolate this. What do you see is going on in this control cage? What do you see that's happening? This is all nice and smooth. This is all janked out. 
right? See that? See how that's all messed up? That is where all of the, the discontinuity and stuff is coming from. And we can fix this if we simply grab some points and we start pulling them around. And I'm not going to worry too much about this because we're going to do some straightening out at a later date. But let's let's start mashing this thing into shape. And in this case, I want this to be a little flatter across the front. And maybe we scale all of that. Maybe we scale all these to zero so they line up. And then maybe we scale all these to zero so they line up. See how I'm doing that using the gumball? I'm going to scale all these to zero. And then maybe I'll scale all these to zero. Now it's like much more organized, and you can see that our tangency returned because all of this stuff started to line up again. So now we have to evaluate our shape. And if we go to the front view, you can see that it's a mess in the front view. We've got this point because all of this stuff doesn't line up. So let's grab all of these guys and let's line them up. Just scale to zero, it flattens out. Now this should be a nice smooth shape. And it is because we've got our tangencies doing what we want them to do. Now, this, this point and this point probably don't belong in this row. So if we pull it out a little bit, see how we've added that little, that little butch in there? That's because this guy belongs with them. So let's put them back in line and then let's pull them together. And then that way they all go together. And that way, if we move them, it stays nice and smooth because we haven't introduced any mess in there. Now, if I double click this, you can see there's an entire row right here. And because the blue handle showed up, you know they're not flat. I'm going to add the center point because this row and the center point need to be lined up in the Z in order for that discontinuity to disappear. See how that disappeared and it made it all nice and smooth? So now I can start messing with this row by row. And I can say, well, what does this shape do? What does this shape do? Because we've organized it and lined it all up, now we, can, we have really, really fine control over what's happening with this base. And in this case, this looks a little flat to me. So um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these out like that. And then I'm going to take a look and see what's going on. And you can see the reason that where that flatness is coming through. See this S curve? Let's line those up in this direction. See that looks nicer now? And we can determine whether this is too much or not enough just by whether we pull it apart or, or not. All right, and this point here, maybe that wants to go forward or back. I don't know. We can mess with it at a later date and find out. But I think this is pretty close to what I wanted. Maybe we pull this a little farther like that. And because we're only going X, Y, Z, it doesn't really matter. We can We can really play with it. And let's double check that everything is as it should be. When you select these, you shouldn't see a red handle if they're if they're lined up in the correct order. So no red handle, which means they're they're already scaled to zero, so we're in good shape. And we can decide whether we want to pull this. Maybe this row needs to come back a little bit. Maybe that's what's making this front feel a little a little flat. Yeah, I kind of like that better. And we can always violate our own rules, and we can pull this forward a little bit, too, if it needs to be roundier. Because we're not matching side to side, we can, you know, we can play with this and see what it's going to do. So I think I'm okay with that. I think I may actually pull these guys back a little farther. Like that. All right, let's show everything else <clears throat> and take a look and say, is that 
that got a little big on us. So I'm going to pull that in and I may sync the entire thing just a little bit like that. Make sure that we've got a good, good solid connection. I'm going to cap this so that that makes this a solid piece, right? So this is a chunk, this is a chunk. Let's Boolean it together. And then let's run a blend around the bottom. And I think we're almost out of here. <laughs> let's make this much bigger. Because we can. And let's add a handle at the back just so we've got a little bit more control. That didn't take for whatever reason. I think that looks good like that. I'm going to let it run. And then let's emap the whole thing. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. I think those are transitioning quite nicely. By the time that got through a production facility and molds were polished and grinds were grinded and all that stuff, I think we'd be in great shape. All right, let's just for fun, let's throw um, a couple of materials on here. And to do that, I'm gonna split this right here. Actually, maybe we will follow the lines. And let's split this guy. Come on now. Actually, I'm going to wire cut it because I want it to be solid. Come on now. What are you doing? That's the wire. This is the object. And I want it to be C plane normal. No? You're going to mess with me, huh? Fine. I'll show you. Oh, that's because. <laughs> Good grief. Okay, that's because the curve got split in one of the dumb things that we did before. So let's try this again. <laughs> uh, oh, live demo. You can be like that, huh? There we go. Eighth time is a charm. So, and then I'm going to do another wire cut down here because this is kind of assuming that this would be a break point down here. And actually, I'm going to make this a curve because everything's curved and speedy. Let's continue with that theme. There we go. So we've got this, this piece broken off into its own piece, and let's assign a few materials. And I did pull some materials from Substance, um, which, by the way, um, we do have Substance Import activated for the Mac now, which is which is a triumphant and magical thing. Um, to get to it, run Package Manager, search for Substance. Actually have to wait for it to load. Search for substance, click on it, hit install, and then restart Rhino. And when you go to your material stack, if you go to hit the plus, you'll have a substance pick in here, and then you can import substance materials. So I'm going to just assign, let's go to rendered view. And I'm not going to subject you to actually watching a render go, but let's just set one up. So we'll do that, and I'm going to sub-object select by shift control drag right-click, assign, 
and that gives us our wood. And we can set the mapping on this. I, I think I'd probably set the mapping on this a little different, but I'm not going to sweat that too much right this second. And then let's add a metal. And these pieces all get metal. And I'm shift control clicking to get those. And it looks like I missed a little piece of the wood, so I'm going to add some wood. And then let's add. Let's add some let's add like a nice like kind of early industrial design kind of minty green color. Ooh, I hate that. Let's not do that. <laughs> let's make it. Let's make it something much cooler than that. Oh man, let's do something. Uh, let's do something like uh, a more modern gray. That's. I think I feel better about that. Ugh. Okay. All right. I might play around with colors on that. But now that we've got our assignments, we can do that, and I can say, okay, well, what's it look like in red? What's it look like in like kind of more of a? Yeah, that's actually more of a better. No. Mouse. Why? There we go. That's a little better feel to this whole thing. And then I'm going to just hide my hide my image and my ground plane snaps. And then, you know, the rendered view in Rhino has gotten so good. This is just the real-time working view. I I rarely even do renderings anymore. You know, if we just simply just hit the ray trace button here, it's going to start, but because on the Mac, you know, the the GPU is not um, enabled yet, the rendering is actually kind of slow. And if you look at the, um, it's not bad. It's it's you know, it's okay. But when you've used the the CUDA stuff on the NVIDIA side um, on the PC, it's incredible how fast that stuff has gotten. So I, I get it. It's a little painful to do the to do the renderings on the Mac side. So basically what I essentially end up doing is I just I just use rendered mode. And the the appeal to this, especially if you're using PBRs like some of the substance physically based materials, they look amazing in rendered view. And um, and so I end up usually doing most of my visualization just with just with you know, rendered view on the Mac because it's really, really fast. So that's kind of what I have for you today. It, a simple product that we tried to pack a lot of like, you know, concept and in-depth and getting into the the points and stuff like that. But this kind of gives you, you know, a starting point where you can hopefully start exploring a little bit more complex forms and, and you know, get a little bit better understanding of what happens and how to use these surfaces under the hood. So. I think I'm going to cut it there. We're 15 minutes over, um, which is not as bad as yesterday. I was about, an, I was about 40 minutes over yesterday. So, um, so I think that's about it. Are there any questions at all? I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Um, just hit the chat and type them in. And if not, I will let you be on your way. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to cut it. Thank you very much. I'm Kyle Houchins. Go make great stuff. Thanks. Bye.